The Mist. The Mist, in my opinion, is one of the best horror movies of the past 10 years, and I almost didn't watch it because it looked kind of stupid. Uh, if you haven't watched it by now, I definitely recommend you go back and watch The Mist. And read the book too, because it's a good book, and now tonight, tonight, that is, if I finish editing this video in time, uh, the TV series The Mist premieres. What makes The Mist such a great story to me is that it's one of those horror movies that it takes the external force of the monsters, but it's not really about the monsters specifically. It, what it does is it uses the monsters to take all these people in this world, squeeze them together in a situation, a tense situation where survival it's not guaranteed, and you start to see all like the little things, the clashes of human nature reveal themselves. I feel like all of the best horror stories are like this, or at least 90% of them. Like, think Night of the Living Dead. Night of the Living Dead, it's the zombie movie, but what really made Night of the Living Dead a great movie was the fucking characters. Everyone is in this situation together, they don't really know each other or care about each other, and maybe they can work together to survive, maybe they will have to go at each other's throats to survive, and all the different aspects of their characters reveal themselves in this struggle, and it's a type of story that there's so many different kinds of ideas and people in the world that you can keep on going back to it and have a totally new movie over and over again. That's part of what makes the Mist TV series really exciting to me, is that they've kind of decided to not, they're not just gonna straight up directly adapt the book or the movie, they're gonna take a broader look at the world and follow different people who are in this situation. So it really gives them a chance to explore these characters individually. It's funny to me that it seems like there's a lot of people complaining that in the trailers for the Mist that have come out so far, you don't really see any monsters or anything like that coming out of the Mist. Yeah, part of that is that they just probably don't have the budget to have really realistic monsters monsters in this show, but I feel like if that's really ruining the show for you, you kind of don't get what this is about. I even saw a sponsored Facebook post that they put out that said, Fear Human Nature. So right there you know that the producers of the show, they understand that the what this kind of a horror story is really about, and they're perhaps using budgetary limitations to force themselves in that creative direction. Now, I don't know if the show's gonna be any good. I hope it's good, because I really like this story, but there's just something so appealing to me about horror stories where human beings wind up being the real monsters. I know it's kind of a cliche thing to say, but it's a, an interesting theme to me. Like, even War of the Worlds, like, I have no interest in ever watching War of the Worlds ever again. But that one scene, man, where, like, they're fighting, the people are fighting for that one car, killing each other, trying to be the one that gets away in it. Like, to me, like, that is the reality of what we are deep down inside. Like, society and working together and living in harmony, that's a luxury, that's artificial, that's because we've managed to build up so much of the world around us that's, now we can kind of have that, uh, that promise of safety and whatnot. But you take all that away with a disaster, or monsters, or something, and that shit will go right out the fucking window so fucking fast. Like, there'll be some people who try to hold on to it, but those won't be the people who fucking survive. Or maybe they will, who knows? That's kind of the importance of having fiction explore these ideas, right? Something else that's interesting to me about this, though, is, like, what they'll do if the show actually winds up being successful and it has to go on for a long time, because even though they're going to be exploring different groups of survivors and whatnot, I don't think they've set out to make it an, an anthology series, so there is going to be some passage of time, so what happens when they reach that ending? I don't, don't think they could possibly go in the movie direction, they might have to go in the book direction. And to me, the movie had such a more powerful ending. To me, it's like one of the like, darkest, most fucked up twists I've ever seen, and yeah, I've been told that it's actually other stories have had that kind of ending, but <sighs> obviously I'm going into fucking spoilers right now, so you know, if you don't want to hear anything, I recommend that you subscribe, like, and comment and go watch another video, because you're going to learn some shit now. Pretty much Thomas Jane in the movie, they get to this end where they realize they're just not going to get out alive, so he mercy kills his family, and then sits there crying. <laughs> By the way, this crying scene gave birth to one of my favorite memes back in the day when people gave a shit about YTMD, so let's look at some of these for a second. <laughs> Now, after he's killed his family and sat there and cried for a bit, all of a sudden, the mist disappears from around him, he sees the army coming in, and the day has been saved. Oh, 
and he realizes that he just killed his wife and his kid for fucking nothing. Fucking nothing. How fucking twisted is that? I fucking love it. Now, the book goes in a totally different direction. The book's ending, they kind of, they find a radio signal, and they just keep on traveling, and Stephen King does that thing that my friend described as kicking you out of the story. That's what Stephen King does some of the time, he's just like, you know what? I busted my fucking nut, clean your titties off, your uber sign its way, get the fuck out of my house, get the fuck out of my story. And that's what he does in The Mist, basically, and there's some people who want to argue with me that, oh, it's better because it's ambiguous, but I could appreciate a good ambiguous ending. However, ambiguity in and of itself isn't better, and I feel like the people who always go to that are the people who say that just because they think it makes them sound smart, and that's not necessarily so, because the ambiguity of an ending, for it to be good, I think it has to be kind of earned by the rest of the story in a way, like a good... A good example of that, I think, is Existence, which a lot of people didn't watch, which is unfortunate, because it came out around the same time as The Matrix, explored similar themes about the nature of reality, and it had a much lower budget. It was more of a body horror film, which David Cronenberg is good for, but in the end, and once again, spoilers, you kind of, you wound up in this layer of the video game world where you're not really sure which reality is the real reality, and it's a kind of ambiguity that reinforces everything that's been told in the story so far. I feel like the book ending of The Mist doesn't do that, and that's why to me it was an ending that fell flat. It felt more like Stephen King just ran out of steam, and Stephen King of all people, as I understand, he, even he said that the movie ending was better. Stephen King, if you know anything about Stephen King, he's the same guy who he saw the movie The Shining, you know, one of the most classic movies of all horror ever fucking made. You know, it's like one of the rare horror movies that's been elevated to uh, a status of legitimacy in mainstream culture. That fucking movie was not good enough of an adaptation for him, so he decided to make his own attempt at doing a fucking Shining movie that was garbage. This guy, this same Stephen King, thought the movie version of something he did was better. So what does that tell you? So I am really curious to see what direction the TV series will go, and if it survives, if it's good, hopefully it's good, because I really would like this this franchise to get a... Uh, to really get the due that I think it deserves. But anyhow, I'm curious what you guys think, um, both about the ending, about the TV series, and about this type of video, because recently I've been doing a lot of streaming, and it seems to have come out that a lot of the people who watch this channel regularly are actually big horror movie fans, and although I've never really done any horror movie content on this channel, I fucking love horror movies, so if you guys want to see more of that, I'm down. So let me know in the comments section, and until next time, everybody get fucked.